Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the iPhone 3GS and see how the specific iPhone holds up in 2023. Now, clearly this specific device is not worth buying anymore. It's a very, very old iPhone. But what's very interesting about it was that this was actually one of the first iPhones I think I've ever used personally, and I've talked about this quite a bit, but this was one of those devices that honestly was a pretty big difference coming from its predecessor. So I think that was something that was very interesting. Also, I do kind of think that with something like the, you know, iPhone 3GS, and this was one of those devices that meant a lot to a lot of people at one moment. So I think that's something that's really cool too. So clearly, like I said, I wouldn't recommend buying this thing anymore. But if you want to pick up some phones, I would recommend buying. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there. You can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the 3GS, this thing, I think, was a decent successor. It was actually a good successor from the 3G. But the problem is, is that the thing with the 3GS was that it visibly looked the same as the 3G. So it was almost exactly the same exact thing you were getting from the, you know, from the predecessor which to some people you might be okay with. You might be like, oh, you know, for a device that came out in 2009, maybe it looks good and everything, which might be the case. But you also have to remember for a phone that came out in 2009, this thing was pretty much top of the top. It looked very good. The only criticism I remember of a lot of phones from 20, you know, 2009 that were kind of aiming at the 3GS was basically its size. It was a small device. It really wasn't the biggest thing of all time. And because of that, it was a pretty easy target. And a lot of people were able to easily target this thing because of its size. So take that as you will. And you know, they, you know what they say, but you know, I, I think this thing definitely at the time, you know, was a pretty good looking phone. It had a 3.5 inch TFT panel on the front. It was 320p, which is a fairly low resolution. But I think even that wasn't the biggest deal of all time. Again, you have to remember with a device like this, it is what it is. There's not much we can do about it. And I do think, like I said before, it sits in a decent spot for what it was. On the bottom, it had a 30 pin connector, which in and of itself was very interesting for it to have. But, you know, by that point, we still already had 30 pin connectors on every single iPhone since then. So it really wasn't that big of a deal either. And that was kind of it on the bottom. You also had a headphone jack on this phone too, which is great. That's something we actually don't have on any of our phones. We don't have a 30 pin connector or a headphone jack on any of those iPhones anymore, which is kind of funny. And that was kind of it. That was pretty much all we were getting on this specific iPhone, which I think was good enough. On the back, you were getting that single camera setup, which was also pretty decent. And I would definitely tell you as a total of this phone, I think it definitely looked good and it definitely looked premium. With that, even though it had like a plastic back, it still looked very nice. And even in 2009, there were still lots of phones coming out that basically had very basic panels, maybe not even multi-touch screens. And, you know, I think for this type of panel, for what it was, it still looks pretty decent. It's not the worst thing of all time. And, you know, I think it definitely isn't the ugliest phone of all time either. Now, on the back, you were getting that single camera setup, which like I mentioned, is pretty cool. You know, for this phone at that moment, 3.5 megapixel camera definitely not the craziest megapixel kind of all time it could film basically 480p video which was fairly basic for the most part not anything crazy but i think that's pretty cool you know didn't have a front camera at all but that's kind of what a lot of devices were rocking with during that moment so i don't think it was the biggest deal of all time either that this device had that type of capability because that's just kind of what all phones had during that moment they didn't have a front camera they only had a back camera and that was pretty much it other than that you're pretty much getting a fairly basic camera for the most part, which I think is fairly fair for the most part. So that kind of sums it up there. There's not really a whole lot else to kind of talk about there. Now, software and longevity. This is another one of those areas where this phone just really, I mean, or would you really get a phone that's, you know, unsupported with software like 10 years by now? Like it makes no sense. iOS 6.1.6 is what this thing ended off with. We're on iOS 16 right now. So that makes even less sense to go and buy a phone like this. But I will tell you, it did get several versions of iOS. It started off with iOS 3. It did go all the way up to 6.1.6, which is fairly impressive. And there were jailbreaks available for this thing. And the funny thing is, there were there was actually a backdoor version of some sort of software. I forget what it's called. But I think it was for maybe the first two iPhones or something. But it was a way to get a lot of features that were on the recent like 3GS and 4 on something like the 2G and 3G. But I think since then, there really hasn't been something like that equivalent to a, like a jailbreak kind of thing recently. But that was still an awesome thing that we had during that moment. And that in and of itself was another really cool thing that we had going there too. So that was a really cool thing. We had jailbreaks for this thing, which were also really awesome. So those things are really, really cool in and of itself. Now, I will also add on top of that, 
with a device like a 3G. I mean, 3GS is basically outdated. So there's no point in getting it, like I mentioned before. But it's still kind of funny for what it brought at the time. Now, it also had, it didn't have like the Apple A series chip inside. It had a 600 megahertz Cortex A8 chipset, and it had basically 256 megabytes of RAM. Just think about basically how little of RAM that is in this day and age. It's a very, very low amount of RAM to have on a phone, but I mean, could you imagine for that moment during that time? It's just kind of what you were getting. You know, it's one of those devices that you would get. And essentially, even though it wouldn't be completely outdated, it's already like, it's not that much RAM to have on a phone. But I'm sure back in 2009, when this thing came out, it's probably a good amount, but we all kind of know in this day and age, it really is not that much RAM anymore. And that's just kind of what's happening when you're getting a device like this. It's already an outdated version of, you know, power. So that kind of covers it up there. I do want to bring back on the software side one more thing. You have to also remember that every single application you would ever use in your life is pretty much already unsupported since like iOS 13. So if you're not on iOS 13, almost all the apps, you're going to have to download some older version. And especially if you're on iOS 6, 95% of the applications you're going to be using probably won't even work in their full potential because you're on such an outdated version of their update. But also you're going to have to, you know, basically either jailbreak your phone to get them to work. And even that would be such an inconvenient thing to do. So those things in and of itself are just some of the weirder things to have on a device like this. And it just kind of sucks because when you get a device like this, it's already going to be outdated from that standpoint. So take that as you will. It's just one of those things that kind of happens. But in my personal opinion, that's just one of those things that kind of happens here. Now, another thing, battery life, 1400 million power battery, definitely not the smallest battery of that time. But again, it really wasn't that big either for them, you know, even for that moment, a lot of Androids, which people call them droids during that moment, which were like the lineup for Motorola, you know, those phones, you know, they had a lot of potential, but like I've stated in this day and age, this battery is small and this whole entire phone is not really a phone I would recommend people to buy. When you're getting something like a, you know, iPhone 3GS in 2023, we all know this phone is pretty much outdated, but it did bring a lot. You know, it lasted much longer than I thought in terms of software. The hardware was pretty decent inside, and I would say it was a pretty decent performance jump coming from the iPhone 3G. But it quickly became outdated because of phones like the iPhone 4 and the 4S, especially by the time the iPhone 6 came out, this phone was like archaic. Even by the time the iPhone 4 came out a year later, this phone was already archaic in its own way. So take that as you will, but that's pretty much how this phone is kind of, you know, building up in this day and age. It's not a phone I would pretty much recommend anyone to buy anymore. And it's a fairly basic device, you know, even from like 2013 onwards. But if you want to buy a phone, like I said, I would recommend you know where to get them, basically. So that pretty much covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, help me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.